Hi everybody welcome back on lit up with ani in this session we are going to talk about russian formalism uh, russian formalism we were doing a structuralism and there are a lot of common things between russian formalism and structuralism for example uh, both of them emerged with the influence of sosios ideas uh, both of them pay attention to the form of the text and many others however there are a lot of uh, a uh, differentiation also there's a there's a lot of difference also between the two um like russian formalism pays attention to the elements that are there in the text the form structuralism however is focused upon more larger structures let's uh, talk about russian formalism so russian formalism was emerged it it came out in uh, the early 20th century 1910s till like 1930s tak it was a very prominent literary theory and a critical approach and the aim of the study of literature was to study the art forms different art forms and of course while studying those art forms they wanted to pay attention to the formal elements of the text they wanted to pay attention to the structures of literary texts rather than the content or historical context and that is what is similar with structuralism also रशियन फॉर्मलिज्म ऑफकोर्स रशियन फॉर्मलिज्म है तो रशिया में डेवलप हुआ और फॉर्मलिज्म है तो यू कैन अंडरस्टैंड वेरी वेल यू नो फॉर्मलिज्म का मतलब क्या होता है फॉर्म पे अटेंशन देना तो यही है बेसिकली रशियन फॉर्मलिज्म का जो कोर uh, एलिमेंट है और कोर स्टडी उन्होंने जो किया वो यही था नाउ इट वॉज ऑफकोर्स वी हैव टू स्टडी द डिफरेंट पीपल हुआ देयर इन रशियन फॉर्मलिज्म एंड वॉट आर द डिफरेंट कॉन्सेप्ट दैट दे गेव दैट आर इम्पॉर्टेंट फॉर आस टू स्टडी it was developed by a number of scholars and critics viktor slovaski yuri tainanov vladimir prop borik aikenbaum roman jacobson boris tomashkivsky grigory gukovsky russian hai sare isliye ski ski at the end russian formalism challenged the prevailing literary theories of the time particularly the re- realist approach again another similarity with structuralism even structuralism uh, challenged the realist approach to study literature and even russian formalism they challenged this dominant us time pe dominant tha realistic literature to usko challenge kiya instead they sought to explore the uniqueness in art unique qualities of literature as a constructed form of art to kya realism hai kya reality hai literature mein ye unka focus nahi tha उनका फोकस था कि जो भी आर्ट फॉर्म है उसकी यूनिक क्वालिटीज को समझना एज अ कंस्ट्रक्टेड फॉर्म ऑफ आर्ट रशियन फॉर्मलिज्म हैड अ वेरी सिग्निफिकेंट इंपैक्ट ऑन द इंटायर लिटरेरी थ्योरी एंड क्रिटिसिज्म नॉट जस्ट इन रशिया ऑल दो दिस इंटायर मूवमेंट रशियन रशियन फॉर्मलिज्म वॉज शॉर्ट लिफ्ट बट इट हैड ह्यूज इम्पैक्ट नॉट जस्ट इन रशिया बट इंटरनेशनली and it in fact it gave way to other critical movements including structuralism structuralism is partly influenced by russian formalism and semiotics kyunki semiotics russian formalism or structuralism dono mein hi dono ne semiotics ko study kiya hai and it influenced later developments in literary analysis now we'll talk about the major concepts that are there in russian formalism the first one is defamiliarization it is also known as ostrenny defamiliarization was a concept it was given by viktor slovaski viktor slovaski ne bola that literature pur- literature ka jo purpose hai is to present the world in a way that defies ordinary perception otherwise all of us are Uh, looking at the world whatever we read in literature it also talks about the worldly things and sometimes of course the metaphysical things also but wo sari cheeze hum bhi soch sakte hain so what makes it special the way of presenting it to jo ordinary concepts hain unko extraordinary karke present karna that is defamiliarize karna we are already familiar with something but literature presents it in a way it defamiliarizes it it makes it strange for example poetry or any love songs whenever we hear songs or we read poetry it is so beautifully presented the language that the common concept of love 
is made extraordinary and there are number of love songs number of love poetry and each one has its own essence that is because it has made it strange to us the concept so uh, it was the idea of defamiliarization or making the familiar strange according to slovaski literature's purpose is to present the world in a way that defies ordinary perception forcing readers to view familiar objects and experiences from a new perspective that is defamiliarization next is fabula and schuzet fabula and schuzet russian formalists ne inko introduce kiya fabula schuzet ko to differentiate between chronological order of events of the story and the actual sequence of the events that are presented in a story matlab ek to ho gaya logical sequence matlab ek shuruaat hai beginning ek middle hai ek end hai logical sequence but that is not uh, it is not necessary that in the narrative it will be presented to us in the same order beginning middle and end right it can be it can begin in media res shuruaat beech se hui end pehle aaya aur fir beginning pe hum gaye it can be something like that and that is the events presented in the narrative so what is fabula and what is schuzet fabula is the chronological order of the events in a story aur schuzet kya hai actual sequence of events that are presented in the narrative this distinction highlighted how authors manipulate the plot to create specific effects on readers so fabula was the term which was used by vladimir prop in his work morphology of folk tales very important text but it is not just vladimir prop who has talked about it later on it was developed by so many other scholars within the formalist movement only hmm? however schuzet was talked about in boris tomashkevsky tomashkevsky's work uh, thematics and also in for a theory of prose so it further elaborated on prop's concept only he used the term schuzet to denote the way in which the author arranges or organizes the plot functions in the actual narrative he discussed the idea in his essay thematics 1925 and elaborated on it in his essay for a theory of prose 1928 that was the other concept third is foregrounding foregrounding is another term which is associated with russian formalism which refers to the deliberate use of literary devices to draw attention to a certain element within a text aapne koi ek specific element hai aapke text mein jisko aapne highlight karna hai so what will you do wahan pe aap koi literary device use karoge so it is a deliberate use of literary device to pay attention to certain elements within a text foreground kar diya aapne kisi cheez ko this technique is used to heighten the reader's awareness and engagement with the work it was introduced by roman jacobson so his ideas about foregrounding were part of his broader work on poetics and linguistic theory it's not one major work that he talks about it it was a part of his broader work that he did on poetics and literary theory now we talk about these were the some of the major concepts that we need to know you know defamiliarization fabulous cuzet and foregrounding there were different circles that emerged in russian formalism and they also f- fell apart also first was the moscow linguistic circle This circle was one of the earliest groups that was associated with Russian formalism. The founder was Roman Jacobson. It was founded in 1915, and there were other members in it, like Victor Sklovsky, Ikin Bomb was there, Yuri Tynanov was there, um, Osip Brik was there, and it was active till ni- uh, 1920s, somewhere around 1924-25. बाद में ये जो group था, it disbanded in the early 20s. क्यों क्योंकि उसके जो मेंबर्स थे दे डिस दे समबडी वेंट टू सम अदर प्रोफेशनल पाथ समबडी वेंट टू अ डिफरेंट ग्रुप ऑल टुगेदर दिस इज हाउ द ग्रुप डिस्पर्स बट द कॉन्सेप्ट दैट दिस दैट इमर्ज 
इन दिस टाइम 1950s, 15 एंड 20s में इन मॉस्को लिंग्विस्टिक सर्कल अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट इन रशियन फॉर्मलिज्म अदर अदर ग्रुप वॉज पेट्रोग्रैड सेंट पीटर्सबर्ग में लिंग्विस्टिक सर्कल इट वॉज फाउंडेड बाई यूरी तायन ऑफ दिस सर्कल ऑपरेटेड इन पेट्रोग्राड एंड शेयर सिमिलर इंटरेस्ट विद मॉस्को लिंग्विस्टिक सर्कल इट्स जस्ट डिफरेंट प्लेसिस थी दे एक्सपैंडेड ऑन द फॉर्मलिस्ट आइडियाज रिलेटेड टू स्ट्रक्चर एंड एवोल्यूशन ऑफ लिटरेरी वर्क एंड दे पेड अटेंशन टू हिस्टोरिकल एंड एवोल्यूशनरी एस्पेक्ट्स ऑफ लिटरेचर ऑल्सो दिस वॉज समथिंग दैट वॉज डिफरेंट अनदर वॉज ओपोजैस सोसाइटी इट इज ऑल्सो नोन एज सोसाइटी फॉर द स्टडी ऑफ पोइटिक लैंग्वेज और दिस इज हाउ इट इज ट्रांसलेटेड ओपोजैस का फुल फॉर्म इंग्लिश में नहीं है रशियन सो इट वॉज अ सिग्निफिकेंट फॉर्मुलिस्ट ग्रुप फाउंडेड बाय विक्टर स्लोवास्की एंड अदर कॉलीग्स फॉर देयर ओपोजैस प्लेड अ क्रूशियल रोल इन शेपिंग फॉर्मुलिस्ट प्रिंसिपल्स एंड प्रोमोटिंग द कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ डिफॉर्मिलराइजेशन डिफॉर्मिलराइजेशन का कॉन्सेप्ट जो प्रोड्यूस हुआ था जब शुरुआत हुई थी उसकी इट वॉज इन वेन स्लोवास्की वॉज इन दिस ग्रुप मॉस्को लिंग्विस्टिक सर्कल सी विक्टर स्लोवास्की जियर ऑल्सो ओपोजैज ने उस कॉन्सेप्ट को प्रमोट किया एज अ सेंट्रल एस्पेक्ट ऑफ लिटरेरी एनालिसिस एंड देन वी हैव प्राग लिंग्विस्टिक सर्कल वाई प्राग इट्स नॉट बेस्ड इन रशिया इट वॉज अ ग्रुप विच वॉज इन्फ्लुएंस्ड बाई रशियन फॉर्मलिज्म पर्टिक्युलरली थ्रू द वर्क ऑफ रोमन जेकब सन हु लेटर बिकेम अ प्रोमिनेंट फिगर ऑल्सो इन स्ट्रक्चरल लिंग्विस्टिक्स सो स्ट्रक्चरलिज्म दैट इज वाई हम लोग यहीं पर पढ़ते हैं इसको The Prague linguistic circle was instrumental in developing structuralist ideas in the study of language and literature. Okay, so these are the different circles or groups that were there in Russian formalism. Now we talk about some major concepts that were given by Roman Jacobson, a very important scholar, a very important theorist. The first concept that was given by Roman Jacobson was metaphor metonymy. बहुत बार एग्जाम में पूछा है सिंपली पूछा है मेटाफर मोटोनोमी किसका कॉन्सेप्ट है रोमन जेकबसन का रोमन जेकबसन सी मेटाफर मोटोनोमी इज यू ऑल नो इट्स दे आर टू लिटरेरी डिवाइस इन लैंग्वेज रोमन जेकबसन वॉज ऑल्सो वर्किंग ऑन लैंग्वेज ही वॉज वर्किंग विद अफेजिक्स अफेजिक्स कौन होते हैं अफेजिक्स आर पीपल हु हैव लैंग्वेज डिफिकल्टी और इनेबिलिटी टू यूज लैंग्वेज विदाउट डिफिकल्टी सो इट्स नॉट दैट दे कम्प्लीटली डोंट नो लैंग्वेज नो एंड इट इज नॉट बाई बर्थ ऑल्सो समथिंग हैपन्स समटाइम्स एन एक्सीडेंट और लेट से अ ब्रेन स्ट्रोक राइट और पेरालिस विच लीड्स टू सम डिसफंक्शंस सम इनेबिलिटीज एंड लैंग्वेज इज वन ऑफ दैम तो जिसको लैंग्वेज डिफिकल्टी हो जाती है दैट इज वी वी कॉल इट अफेजिया so he worked with the physics and he developed the theory of language use he he saw that how do we actually produce language and he talked about metaphor and metonymy ab metaphor hota kya hai language ke context mein communication ke context mein metaphor ek figure of speech hai jisme hum do we compare two very unrelated things with each other why to suggest a similarity between them it is a process of understanding or experiencing one thing in terms of another for example we have phrases like time is money or the world is a stage are metaphors that represent complex ideas by drawing connection between the two different concepts time or money वैसे related nahi hai but yahan pe humne ek phrase mein use kiya hai we are drawing some similarity between them or we can say um, traffic is crawling the crawling jo hai it is some feature which is associated with insects or uh, small babies because it is it represents something very slow to so, traffic ke sath humne crawling use kar diya that's a metaphor jacobson ne argue kiya that metaphor operates on principle of similarity remember principle of similarity it relies on association of shared attributes we are using two different things in one phrase together because there is some shared connection between them crawling yes it it ref, it refers to something which is slow but 
traffic which is crawling we are using them together because there is some uh, shared attribute between them which is slow so there are some characteristics between the two compared elements that are associated metaphor therefore metaphor is an act of substitution through selection and association humne select kiya aur humne associate kiya koi ek word humne select kiya aur usko associate kiya dusre word ke sath remember then he talked about metonymy again in in it's a figure of speech that operates on a different principle it involves substituting metaphor mein to humne select ki karke associate kiya metonymy mein hum kya karte hain एक फ्रेज के लिए या फिर एक वर्ड के लिए हम सब्सटीट्यूट कर देते हैं दूसरे वर्ड को दूसरे फ्रेज को दैट इज क्लोजली रिलेटेड टू इट इन सम वे ऑफन थ्रू कॉन्टिग्यूटी और एसोसिएशन अगेन अगेन एसोसिएशन तो होगा ही होगा इन मटोनोमी द सब्सटीट्यूटेड टर्म इज रिलेटेड टू द ओरिजिनल टर्म इन द कॉन्टेक्सट ऑफ कम्युनिकेशन ऐसा नहीं है कि अब कोई फीचर होगा जो सिमिलर होगा नो no. there will be some uh, relation in terms of the communication that is going on for example hum bolte hain um, the white house issued a statement the white house white house is actually a building a building cannot give you a statement cannot give you any orders but who who is giving the order the person sitting inside the white house the president but we have replaced the president with the phrase the white house ye ho gaya substitution metonymy the white house issued a statement the term white house is used metonymically to refer to the president of united states or the executive branch of the us government india won the match pura india to match nahi jeet gaya india here we have substituted the the team indian team or i've read shakespeare i've read milton all of these we use metonymically so what is it that jacobson says jacobson argues that metonymy operates on the principle of contiguity it relies on the spatial temporal or conceptual closeness koi na koi closeness hai between the substituted term and the original term that is the principle of combination theek hai तो मेटाफर के लिए उन्होंने बोला प्रिंसिपल ऑफ सिलेक्शन एंड एसोसिएशन मेटोनमी इज अ प्रिंसिपल ऑफ कॉम्बिनेशन सो सिलेक्शन एंड कॉम्बिनेशन टू वेज ऑफ लैंग्वेज ऑपरेशन दिस इज व्हाट ही कंक्लूडेड फ्रॉम मेटाफर एंड मेटोनमी दैट वी यूज लैंग्वेज बाय सिलेक्टिंग सिलेक्टिंग एंड कंबाइनिंग द लैंग्वेज आई गिव यू एन एग्जाम्पल सी If I say I live in A, and I put a dash, you have a and मैं बोलना चाहती हूँ कि मैं एक घर में रहती हूँ. I live in a. You have a lot of words, right? I live in a. You can say house. Or if you are rich, a mansion. I live in a home. I live in a palace. And so on and so forth. You can go on. adding so many terms in it hmm i live in a cave etc so what is it it is acha ek cheez jo humne pad nahi paaye the paradigmatic and syntagmatic because i wanted to do it here paradigmatic kya hota hai vertical selection ab ye ek vertical selection hai आपको पता है आपने एक वर्ड यूज करना है आई लिव इन अ आपके दिमाग में एक वर्टिकल लिस्ट है हाउस होम पैलेस मेंशन केव एट्सेट्रा ये एक वर्टिकल लिस्ट है जिसमें से आप एक वर्ड सिलेक्ट करोगे तो आपने सिलेक्ट कर दिया लेट से आई लिव इन अ होम पैराडिग्मैटिक पैराडाइम तो ये क्या हो गया सिलेक्शन द अदर थिंग इज the entire sentence itself live i home in a 
दिस इज नॉट अ करेक्ट सेंटेंस राइट सो इन योर माइंड आप कंबाइन करते हो इन वर्ड्स को टू मेक अ प्रॉपर सेंटेंस आई लिव इन अ हो दिस इज कॉम्बिनेशन दिस इज हाउ वी प्रोड्यूस लैंग्वेज एंड दिस इज कॉल्ड सिंटैगमेटिक सिंटैगम दिस इज paradigm so these are the two selection and combination this is selection paradigm this is combination syntax or syntagmatic so jacobson according to jacobson both selection and combination are used in order to produce language i hope this is clear <laughs> this was one concept of roman jacobson there is another concept given by roman jacobson which is important for us to study that is model of communication it is also known as jacobson communication model it's very simple actually he talks about the various elements that are used in a in a communication in a conversation it provides a structural framework for analyzing the various elements which are involved in the process of communication it was first presented in roman jacobson's essay linguistics and poetics in 1960 so this is the model of communication have a look we have number 1 addresser number 2 addressee number 3 context number 4 message number 5 contact and number 6 code so we have six elements that are there in a model of communication addresser addressee we have the message we have contact we have code we have context let's understand these addresser ek communication ho raha hai addresser kon hai let's say me i am the addresser i am talking to you so you are the addressee i am addressing you so addresser you are addressing hamari baat cheet mein there is a message message you all know what i am trying to share the information that i am trying to share with you is the message then we have a contact what is the contact the channel through which i am communicating with you it could be a handwritten letter it could be an email this here we have a virtual setting next we have code what is code code is the code that i am using the language that i right now in this a uh, particular scenario i am using english language which is understood by me and you both so i am encoding it in a particular selection and combination and you are decoding it by understanding in your mind to wo ho gaya code next we have context what is the context context is the language that is used in the writing now remember code mein maine language ka example diya kyunki hamare case mein hai code could be anything it could be uh any kind of code secret code it could be right so language that is used code refers to the particular writing a bundle pura and the context is the language that is there in that bundle so these are the six elements now Ro- roman jacobson says that there are different uh, functions of these different elements and i have written them in the bracket how do we understand the function he says that in a model of communication there is always something that is dominant in che me se there will be something that will be dominant in a particular conversation for example if in our conversation i am talking about myself then the function of the communication will be emotive if i am talking about you the function will be conative if the message is the most important here the function will be poetic if the code is most important then the function will be metalingual if the channel is important the dom- dominant in our conversation phatic and if language is important the context is important then it will be a referential function okay this is about the model of communication 
you can read from the book also to understand it of course you will be able to understand in a more better way and with more examples finally we talk about the key texts that are there in russian formalism first one is theory of prose it is written by roman jacobson 1925 please remember the dates in this essay jacobson examines the formal aspects of prose hmm, and its distinction from poetry formal aspects prose mein kaise hote hain poetry mein kaise hote hain he discusses the role of language and its function in literary works laying the ground work for his later contributions to linguistics and literary theory next is morphology of folk tale the work by vladimir prop 1928 prop's work is a landmark study in folk folklore analysis koi bhi question aapko folk tales mein se aata hai maximum time it is vladimir prop the answer to it is vladimir prop vladimir prop ne kya kiya na he uh, try to understand he broke the fairy tale down to structures and he took out certain uh, features of it certain functions of it so he very breaks down the structure of russian fairy tales into series of narrative functions and he identified 31 functions in it and he also introduced the concepts of fabula and schuzet although schuzet was later on talked by the other Uh, theorists which became significant contributions to narrative theory the next is art as technique again by viktor slavsky this is 1917 published in this it's an essay very important he introduces the concept of defamiliarization in this work arguing that art's purpose is to make the familiar familiar appear strange to refresh the reader's perception of the world another detail about uh, this work is that early on vladimir ye yeah, viktor slavsky was only focusing on poetry but then he started talking about prose also with this work and focused on a particular work which is lawrence turns tristram shandy okay tristram shandy Vladimir Prop and Slavsky. And the next work is the formal method in literary scholarship. This is by Eichenbaum, 1919. He discusses the importance of formal analysis in the study of literature and emphasizes the autonomy of literary work. Autonomy of literary work of, you know, ne emphasize kiya. Thematics we saw. This is by Boris. Thomas Kevsky jahan pe he has uh, built on the concept of schuzet in this essay he explores the relationship between the theme that is why thematics theme and structure in a literary work he introduces the concept of schuzet and then we have the literary uh, the theory of literature this is by yuri tainan of 1924 he discusses the evolution of literary genres and their relationship to societal changes okay these are some important texts in russian formalism uh when you go on to read different books and you um, look at more key texts please put them down in the comment section so everybody preparing can also see your uh, comment and uh, make a complete list of the key texts in russian formalism okay one more thing that i want to share with you right now only is a little bit about morphology of folk tale um vladimir prop as i said he uh, looked at the fairy tales and pehle to he said that it can be reduced to a set of seven characters remember how many seven characters and who would that be aap khud socho ek fairy tale mein kon kon se characters hote hain hero there is always a false hero <laughs> bas banta hai apne aap ko then we have the villain then we have a donor or 
प्रोवाइडर बेसिकली जो हमेशा हेल्प कर देता है प्रोवाइड करता है वी ऑल्सो हैव अ हेल्पर घर पे हेल्पर होता है देन वी हैव ऑफ कोर्स द प्रिंसेस एंड वी ऑल्सो हैव हर फादर प्रिंसेस एंड अ फादर एंड लास्ट में वी हैव अ डिस्पैचर these are the seven characters and after that he said that we can further um, identify 31 functions in the fairy tales and i am not going to list down the 31 functions you can read that um, i'll just give you an example he said there are violations there are delivery trickery complicity there are uh, hero's reaction always Mm, we have counter action we have departure first function of donor uh, receipt of magic agent special transference struggle branding and so on and so forth there are 31 function that he talks about okay so these this is about morphology of folk tales let's just quickly see aaj humne kya kya kiya रशियन फॉर्मुलिज्म इंट्रोडक्शन डेवलप कब हुआ 1910 से 30 तक अर्ली ट्वेंटी सेंचुरी इट पेज अटेंशन ऑन द फॉर्मल एलिमेंट्स एंड द स्ट्रक्चर्स ऑफ द टेक्स्ट मेजर प्रोमिनेंट स्कॉलर्स कौन कौन से स्क्लोवास्की यूरी ताइन ऑफ व्लादिमीर प्रॉप आइकन बॉम रोमन जेकबसन बोरिश तोमैस्क्रिस्की एंड ग्रिगरी गुकॉवस्की प्लीज डोंट माइंड माई प्रोनाउंसिएशन कहीं गड़बड़ हो जाए अगर अब आई थिंक आफ्टर रीडिंग दिस इंटायर आफ्टर लिस्निंग टू दिस इंटायर लेक्चर आई होप दैट यूल बी एबल टू एसोसिएट सर्टन कॉन्सेप्ट विद दीज पीपल इसका हमने कुछ किया नहीं नॉट वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर अस बट स्लोवास की डिफॉमिलराइजेशन अभी टाइन एन ऑफ का हमने लास्ट में एक की टेक्स्ट देखा बताओ कौन सा है ब्लादमीर प्रॉप का कॉन्सेप्ट फोक टेल्स वाला भी किया आइकन बॉम का भी हमने एक बुक देखा अभी रोमन जेकबसन के मेटाफर मोटोनोमी एंड देन मॉडल ऑफ कम्युनिकेशन किया बोरिस थाइना टोमैश क्रिस्की का वी सॉश क्यू जैट एंड देन फैबुला ऑल्सो ऑल ऑफ दिस देन वी सॉ द मेजर कॉन्सेप्ट डिफॉमिजराइजेशन फैबुलाश क्यू जैट एंड फोर ग्राउंडिंग इसी में आप ऐड कर सकते हो मेटाफर मोटोनोमी एंड मॉडल ऑफ कम्युनिकेशन मिस ऑफ द डिफरेंट सर्कल्स मॉस्को लिंग्विस्टिक सर्कल पेट्रोग्राड ओपोजैज प्राग लिंग्विस्टिक सर्कल एंड देन वी सॉ जेकबसन मेटाफर मोटोनोमी एंड द मॉडल ऑफ कम्युनिकेशन द सिक्स एलिमेंट्स एंड द सिक्स फंक्शंस एंड देन वी सॉ द की टेक्स्ट थ्योरी ऑफ प्रोज मॉर्फोलॉजी ऑफ फेक फोक टेल आर्ट एस टेक्निक फॉर्मल मेथड इन लिटरेरी स्कॉलरशिप थीमेटिक्स द थ्योरी ऑफ लिटरेचर and that is it i hope everything is clear uh, please go on to read one more time from the books that i have told you and i am sure that you will be able to answer all questions from russian formalism after this thank you for watching please like the video share it with other people and subscribe to my channel to get all the updates of the next lessons to come i'll see you in the next session thank you bye bye